How about cognitive, where business is concerned? How about the affective component? Because often we hear as scientists, how about cognitive, where business is concerned? Quite often we think, well, we do very well when it comes to, uh, to cognition, especially to factual information. There is no shortage of factual information these days. But how many facts of those things do we, of, uh, should we share? How many abstracts, how many commands should we give? What we notice in our study is that there's a sweet spot, and it rests right here between these numbers that you see on the screen, where people will remember what you have to say from your story. There are actually a few responses where people are coming back saying, why would somebody share a story that only had three sentences? And I'm saying this to you because these days we aspire so much at minimalist design and at simplifying everything for our user at the expense of creating such rich environments and experiences where people can actually start building memories. Don't believe that less is more where memorable stories are concerned. In this abundance of words, because this is quite a few words that you would share with an audience, we're also noticing that if you want to earn a spot in somebody else's memory, you have to enable cognitive ease. What do I mean by this? Make sure that whenever people are looking at your content, they find it easy to understand. Notice in some of the responses that we received from our participants, they said, I could remember those things that were relatable to me. That's why it's easy to remember when something makes your hair poofy, or if they're talking about weddings, or something about posting things on LinkedIn, or the birth of a child. All of those things are relatable things. That's what we mean by cognitive ease. They come to mind very easily because we have experienced them in some way before. Does your content enable cognitive ease as you're speaking to other people? Because for instance, blockchain, if we address that, might be easy to some, but not so easy to other people. Enable cognitive ease because the, co the brain is a cognitively lazy organ. That's why we enjoy when things come to mind easily. When they don't, we're just too, even, too lazy to even bring things up. Enable cognitive ease where the cognitive pillar is concerned. See, the reason that this works so well is because they're advertising a product through an element, through an object they can already recognize so easily. The same in here, if somebody wants to convince us to eat more potatoes, notice how they're comparing it to a banana because you already have that belief in your brain. It's easy to relate to something that you already know. And in general, we tend to remember more of what we know anyway. And for this cognitive pillar, what we also know to be true is this. Your story is never about you. Your story is about shedding light on somebody else's story. You see, those stories that they got to be forgettable is because they were so in inward oriented. Quite a few people, when they tell a story, they tend to be the celebrities in their own stories. And those get to be very quickly forgettable because whoever listens to you has different reasons for remembering than you do for remembering your own content. You see, that's why we ask that question, why do you remember your own stories versus why do you remember content from somebody else's? The two reasons are so different. And as we investigate these, uh, these answers that came back during our study, I'm looking at this one, for instance, and if you can read it from, uh, from the back, this person says, like the feeling of the mist and how it makes my hair poofy. So see, at some point, it's not even about that woman's hair. Who cares about Jen's hair? We care about how that makes my hair look. The story is never about you. It's how it sheds light on your, own, on, on your audience's story. How about the affective component? Often, as, uh, when we investigate business content, we know that the emotion is not quite there. There's also a myth that says, whenever you're sharing something that's emotional, surely then we can make that more memorable. Is that always true? Well, we ask that question as we look at this affective component to see, that, to see whether something emotional is always memorable. And the answer is no. How do we know this? Here's an answer that came in. The person said that, I remember something about a wedding, another story about some mentor of sorts, and the rest I don't remember. And notice how at the bottom of the screen, for all of these participants who answered what they remembered, we can see exactly what other stories they read. This person who says they only remember the wedding and the mentor had also read a story about the, um, the Space Challenger disaster. How do you forget that? Because if you take the emotion from a disaster, compare that to the emotion of a wedding, the two are not quite equal. Yet that became forgettable. So as we're wrapping these things up and we're looking at this platform, what I can guarantee is this. Consider your storytelling from this perspective of perceptive, 
cognitive and affective elements. If you have the courage to raise the volume on all three, you will have the advantage of sharing a story with an audience that earns you a spot in their minds long term. You have my email address listed here on the screen. And keep this in mind, when you become memorable, you can indeed convince people to move in your favor because memory does move the world. If people remember you, they're more likely to move in your favor. This is why when you cre create memorable stories, you can increase your power of persuasion. And none of, this, none of us would be here right now unless someone persuaded us to participate in an event like this. You see, we were able to remember their stories. I'm hoping your story will be next. Thank you so much, everyone. Please stay in touch. Thank you.